31. Neil Robertson to break. Not forget when he was 11 5 down to Martin Gould, he'd checked out of the hotel. Well, that's a lucky double kiss. Normally, that's a shot for nothing. Someone in the audience said a 147 now, but uh, I don't know whether they've got the energy for that. Isn't it funny that red that he, he missed there? He knocked one of those in earlier on and he made a 146, an equal mark. Allen's unique record at the Crucible. One. I wonder if he can get the cannon here. He could give himself an early chance. And there's Allison and our partner Chris. He's just one frame away. A uh, little smile, but uh, you know it's not over yet, I'm sure. Not risking the cannon, just playing for the loose one. I must be so proud to have travelled from Melbourne, arrived here and straight into the Crucible Theatre. For the start Nine. of the final. and. A key shot coming up. Cannon into the reds. How many can he push on? Ian Robertson, nine. Well, he decided to just go into them gently. I thought he was going to punch the black in and open some of the game up. As Hazel said in the studio, that one frame to get over the line can sometimes be the hardest, especially when you're not used to doing it here at the Crucible. Just have a look at that. One. He does look a bit tired, doesn't he? And he put everything into that pot. It was a cracking pot, and look where the whites finished up. He may elect to just play the black here. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was a cracking long pot. That's the type of shot he's been knocking in throughout this year's Betfred.com World Championship. But just look at that, rubbing his eyes. Green ball. He's nominated green. One, Neil Robson, four. Yeah. I said he might play on the black, but he would leave a possible pot to the middle pocket if he didn't get that right. Outside. This side. No, no, I'm not going to wait as Neil. Yeah, this way. Yeah, okay. To judge the angle of this, it's as if you're trying to shoot the white ball into the corner pocket. That's what you're looking at because the green is right in the line of that. A bit further away. Mm -hmm. 
Jan Verhaast is saying just a little bit closer. He's got the monitor to look at there. You won't get the angle if you get any closer. <laughs> okay. What do you think of that? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Green one. Nicely stroked in. Just have a look what's available. He can't do a lot with the cue ball here. But this was a good shot, tied under the cushion. He's tied under the cushion again, so he needs a situation where he can just roll the blue in and drop on a red. Probably one to the left middle would be the one. On that one that you suggested, John, six come up a little bit short. Yeah, now it's come short, then it's. I'm wondering whether one there's a gap for one into the left corner. Might be, there might be. Yeah, there it is. What has helped in the last three frames is the fact that Neil Robertson has been getting in first. Okay, he's not been making what we could call frame winning contributions, but it's given him a nice lead. A lead that he can try and protect. 15. In the last frame he got in first, made a break of 36. Frame before that, a break of 35. I know they're not high breaks, but in the context of the way this match is being played out at the moment, very invaluable points. But what Steve and John were saying in the studio is correct. But just a shame, they're both getting a bit tired. The, the mind, they call this tournament the marathon of the mind, and it's certainly proving that. But these two players have played tremendous snooker during this tournament. As I mentioned earlier, 21. Now you see the pot success tournament, 89%. Neil Robertson, 90%, Graham Dot. But Neil Robertson was booking her out of his room because he was 11-5 down to Martin Gould, and Graham Dot was 12-10 down to young Mark Allen. So they've really played well to get here. And there you go. Not... 28. And similar to the last two frames. He's gone into the reds, finished on nothing, but he's got a 40 point lead, and that's what he'll be trying to protect to become the world champion. Neil Robertson, 28. Yeah, 
Yes, he came very close last year. He lost 17-14 in the semi-final to Sean Murphy. This looks like it's the Australians' year. Both these boys will be totally exhausted mentally when this finishes. Nah, he hasn't pushed the plant on for the middle, has he? Neil's having a quick look. There's a couple of little sets of reds there. Now this might be a possibility because he'd get on the black and may not leave one. Yeah, that, that could be made. And once he's lined it up, he'll pick the spot where he wants to knock the first red. There's every chance that this could go in. judged and he's given himself another chance here just over 12 hours and he's in the driving seat it's still not straightforward This is what you've spent your whole life practicing for, this moment here. It's his sixth appearance at the Crucible Theatre. Eight. Not many pots away now. <laughs> and regardless of what happens here, Graham Dot has put up a, an unbelievable performance in this year's World Championship. Mm. He really has. He, can be very proud of himself, and I'm sure his family are. Good solid pot. And now it looks 14. as though this could be the moment that Neil Robertson and, well, all Australia waited for a world snooker champion. the trophy ready and waiting two reds two colors 15 that's all he is away from putting his hands on that coveted trophy A lovely smile there, Neil Robertson. He knows that he's won this year's World Championship. <laughs> and he blows a kiss to his mum, and there she is, sort of waving the Australian flag. She flew at the last minute from Melbourne to see her son. She said if he ever got to the final, she'd promise she'd be there. And he's not let her down. It's been hard graft, it's been a war of attrition. But the Australian now is just putting the finishing touches to a great tournament. And as I say, every credit to Graham Dot. He's put up a fantastic show here. But well, it's hard to describe how Neil Robertson's feeling at this moment. 
Words can't describe it, John. Yes, unbelievable. What it's what every player dreams of. Graham Dot has come what back. Six. He's now the player he was. Fair play. But take nothing away from Neil Robertson here. There'll be a lot of emotion coming out of him. And the pockets now are 53. looking like dustbin lids. He's the champion of the world. The Bedford champion of the world. Took a lot of heart, took a lot of courage. Both players deserve great credit. But Neil Robertson, after a tremendous week, is the champion of the snooker player of the world. Very disappointing. You put a big effort in here this week, Graham. What did you make of the final today? Um, Neil thoroughly deserved to beat me. I thought he was by far and away played a lot better than I did. Um, how I managed to get 13 frames, I really don't know. But I thought Neil thoroughly deserved to win. Very generous. Uh, yeah, a round of applause, there, John. <clears throat> I think um, not everybody will know. In the last couple of years, you've had a tough time of it away from the table. You lost a little bit of enthusiasm for the game. This must certainly have picked you up now, your performance over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I've, pl I've played really well. Obviously, I'm disappointed to lose in the final and not really perform. But um, I needed to get to the semi-finals to get back in the top 16, so I managed to do that. And, and I've played really well, so hopefully I'll be back for next year. Well done. Graham Dot, everybody. Neil Robertson from Australia, champion of the world. What does that feel like? Uh, oh my God, absolutely incredible. Um, I seriously can't believe it because, um, you know, in my last 16 match, I was 11 5 down to Martin Gould. And, uh, you know, the next minute, um, I, uh, after my match against Ali Carter, um, you know, I was, I was really disappointed that I couldn't have any family coming over for the final. Um, you know, Australia being 24 hours flight away so um, then I got a, a voicemail from my mum saying that um, she had organised when I was 15-9 in front overnight against Ali she, uh, she jumped on a plane <laughs> so it was quite lucky that I, that I finished the job off so <laughs> yeah. I mean that was a flight of, uh, flight of faith wasn't it? Yeah absolutely you know uh, my mum and her partner have been travelling for ages and they got about two hours sleep before the first session here and um, yeah it just makes this memory just oh my god this is absolutely perfect what's going on, my, going on in my life right now it's also, it's also a fantastic Cinderella story because you came over here, you're 16, you've got a cue in your hand, £500 in your pocket, and you've joined the snooker circuit. To get here today, well, explain that. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I had, I had three goes at it, really, and, um, yeah, I didn't do any good, and th there's no way in the world any of the guys that would have beaten me, beaten me probably would have thought I, I, could, I could do what I've done, but I just... I don't know, I just um, kept persisting with it and yeah, I came over to Cambridge with 500 quid in my pocket and I had to um, borrow a waistcoat off another Australian player. I couldn't afford to buy one, so uh, I could probably buy a few more now, I guess. <laughs> and of course, there's a lot of people back home in Australia have been watching. What do you think this will do for the sport there again? Well, if this doesn't do anything, then um, I don't know, I probably won't call myself Australian anymore. But, um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, look, I mean, you know, obviously Australians love world champions and, and, and Olympic champions and stuff like that. And, um, you yeah, know, it would have been a big blow if, if I had lost in the final. I, I had all sorts of 
all sorts of those um, kind of pressures to deal with as well. So hopefully, you know, this, this can start, start something special and, and we can start to, uh, you know, get events out there now. Well, it's very late in the morning. There's a matter of wages and the trophies to pick up. And your mother told me she's jet lagged, so we better get on with it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, champion of the world, Neil Robertson. The presentations will be made by the chairman of the WPBSA, Barry Hearn, and the boss of Betfred, Fred Doan. Please give your appreciation for the silver medalist, a magnificent run to the final. Ladies and gentlemen, the pride of Scotland, Graham Dot. Receiving the gold medal and the title Betfred.com World Snooker Champion 2010, Neil Robertson. Yeah.